if your coach, if you don't hate your coach at some point in time, he's not doing his job. Was this embarrassing? How come you didn't, how come you weren't like, let's go, baby, woo! I know, you still, I wear like tennis the shoes sh all day, every day. I try to look nice today and I can barely walk in there. <laughs> and I don't ride a horse like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? That was awesome. Okay. My body and my neurological system's freaking out right now. Okay. Is that excuse that we use on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Where, where is that holding you back in your life? What results are you not creating in your life that you want to create? Say it again. Where, what results are you not creating in your life that you want to start creating? What results am I not creating yeah. that I want to create? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to be exhausted. I want to be able to have everything flow and create. Okay. But I don't know. Let's take this. <laughs> I, just, I just can't even. Okay. So is, is that your limiting belief? So what's a limiting belief? It's something that holds us back from progressing to the next level. Okay. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Okay. Here's where people get caught, guys. Here's, here's the trap. You guys want to know the trap? Okay, I have the microphone, don't worry. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you you made my body freak out. Okay, Here, here's the trap that we get caught in. We go, but it's true, though. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. It matters, is it limiting or not? That's the question. Muggsy Bugs was the shortest NBA player of all time. Is it true the average NBA height is 6'4"? Yes, it is true. But to hold the belief I can't play basketball because I'm too short is still a limiting belief. Okay, so what's the, so what's the biggest limiting belief or the biggest belief that inhibits you from winning this race right here that we just did? Fear that I was going to be judged that I was doing it wrong okay, or do I couldn't it. do it fast enough or I couldn't do it strong enough or proper enough or... Okay. Whatever. Okay, so what's below that? What's below that belief? It's like the way I was brought up, just like stories I taught myself, like the way that, like, just, I don't know. <laughs> like, Ones if you did know. Like, I do know, but it's getting past that and healing my inner child. Yeah. So what's the number one belief we need to get past? What is that, what is that limiting belief? That I'm not good enough. Okay. Not good enough. How long have you been holding on to that belief for? I was really young. Like okay. when you think of that belief, I'm not good enough. Where do you feel it at on your body? Do you feel any type of sensation when you think of that? It's like the pressure, like my heart and like my throat. Like it always gets stuck, like right here. Okay. It's like where it, I just want to like shove it back down. Okay. You know? Like. I never spoke up, <laughs> which is kind of ironic that I'm standing up here in this position. Okay. It's not coincidence, nothing is, okay. but like. So when you think of not being enough and not speaking up, what's the earliest experience, most memorable experience you can think of? It was like three. What happened? Just watching. Just the family that I grew up in, like I have two older sisters and I didn't have, I was probably the youngest at that time. Actually, I had a newborn sister and um, just watching my biological father be the way he treated my mom, and my siblings, but he was never abusive towards me. I was his perfect angel and I just never understood why he singled me out, why I was like perfect and it made me actually feel different. It made me feel more like, like, 
why am I better than them? What's wrong with them? Like, what makes me special? Which really made me feel not special because... So what's the belief you took from that experience? That there must be something wrong with me? <laughs> like, why can they he just be that way towards me too? Because I was the one who was scared. I would just lie. <laughs> okay. And how has this manifested into in today? Because you were saying some things earlier. You're saying I'm tired. Okay. If your hurt, if your heart's getting pressure on it. Yeah, it's not pumping blood. It's not pumping oxygen. That belief is manifesting into your body and slowing you down each day. Because when we get up here, was this uncomfortable? Okay. And what, what are we thinking? We're thinking, what do they think about us? So what's the new belief that we need to take on moving forward? So the limiting belief was what? That I'm not good enough. Okay. If you, are if you are standing in, from, in front of your highest and strongest being right now, the person that you've always wanted to become, they're influencing lives, they're making money, they have incredible amounts of energy, what would that person say to you? You can do anything that you put your mind to. Okay. What would they want you to believe about yourself? <laughs> that I'm like good enough, I'm perfect just the way I am, and I'm exactly where I need to be. So the belief that I feel like you need to take on, and it's your choice, is I am good enough. Why don't you say that? I am good enough. Good. Why don't you say it, and now I want you to take a deep breath after you say it. I am good enough. Why don't you take a deep breath? Just say it again. I am good enough. And if you took on the belief that you're good enough, what would be different in your life? If you took on the belief that you're good enough, what would change each day? fill my cup each day instead of just giving everything to everybody else. Okay. What's the result of just giving everything to everybody else? I'm just empty and exhausted. I'm just tired. Okay. So what's the first thing you need to do to fill your cup each day? How many people can relate to that? I give to everyone and I feel fucking empty at the end of the day. Who can relate to that? Okay, who are you hurting? You're hurting everybody. Moms, you're famous for this. Okay, you give to everyone but yourself, and then you start hurting the very people you're trying to help. Okay, so what's the first thing that we need to do to fill up our cup every day? I just take care of myself, get up earlier. Okay. And shower take care of me put my best face forward myself yeah and we've talked about this haven't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah. yeah if first what you do doesn't work do what your coach originally told you to do in the first place <laughs> okay but this is a good reminder and and we've talked about this it just comes back down to simple things that we need to do each day okay but i promise you that'll make a big difference okay because i know you have big goals and you're going to be on the horse for a long time, which means you can't get tired. When I went into transformation coaching involving from personal training, a lot of the principles didn't change. Are you drinking enough water? Are you taking care of yourselves every day? Why not? Well, because of whatever belief, and you are good enough. 
And so you're choosing each day that you're not good enough. And so it's how do they think? What do they feel about me? And if I give enough to you, then I'm going to feel like I'm enough. So you're, you're, getting, you're trying to get fulfillment from other people feeling good about you, which is dangerous. Because when you choose who you are based upon the positive things they say about you, you're also giving light and you're also giving allowance for the negative things for them to say about you. It's true. Yeah. And I've noticed you, that. you become sticky. Oh, they said I'm great, so I must be great. And, and you give so much light to that and you make it float you. But at the same time, you also gave recognition to the negative things. And your entire world is now outside of your control. It's outside of your world. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You need to look at yourself in the mirror each day and say, I'm fucking beautiful and awesome. doesn't matter if your guy says it. doesn't matter if everyone says it. It's what you believe. So wake up. What time do we need to wake up? <laughs> Don't be unrealistic. What time do we need to wake up? My 20 month old is quite unpredictable. Okay. <laughs> Every time I have gold, <laughs> she somehow like out goals me. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so it keeps getting earlier. <laughs> as okay. soon as it's going to be four in the morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who knows what she's talking about? And I have a kid. I've been going through this last year. You know what I've learned? The kid's going to adapt to whatever schedule you have. Ultimately, they are, okay? And it's a day-by-day -day influence of getting them on your schedule, okay? Everyone asks me, is it nature or nurture? Is it nature or nurture? Yes. It's a lot of fucking both. <laughs> it's a lot of both, so you got to focus on your control over it, okay? I can't control the nature, okay? But I can influence the nurture that will ultimately decide their nature, Okay, and the same goes, goes with you, okay? You are good enough. And do you want people to feel good enough? Of course. Do you want people to fill their cup up? Of course. And then, then you got to do that first and show them that they can do that. My coach said, Travis, do you want your clients to work 16 hours a day? No. Well, why do you do it? Well, that's just me. He's like, no, you're, you're, you can't say that. So I'm honoring people by honoring myself and the same goes for you because you are a leader and you are a coach and you don't have time to get tired you're right I don't you don't have time to get tired you need to <laughs> get that thing going can we give her a round of applause <laughs> need help need help getting up or actually just come over here oh you got it you got it <laughs> Okay, so we've been talking a lot about who, as she shared that, how many people had some breakthroughs as she shared that? Good, okay. I want you guys to share your, your experiences over the course of the days, and I promise you this, there's usually a couple people in the room, okay, that are going to share something that's going to help someone else's breakthrough, okay? That's usually how these events go, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to split up into groups, okay? Can I have all the coaches go ahead and stand up? Okay, so we'll have Melinda right here. She's going to be number one. Gabe's going to be over here, number two. Heidi is going to be over here, number three. So as soon as I call you, go ahead and go over there. Okay, Michelle, okay, number four. Kathy, number five. Audrey, six. Becca, seven. And then uh, Trista will have you go with uh, Audrey. Okay, so I'm going to number you. Okay, hold up your numbers, coaches. Okay, I'm going to count. As soon as I give you a number, go to that person, okay? Here's what we're going to do. I want you to list what are the top four identities you want to own or inter internalize as a leader, okay? What are the four most important attributes you want to have as a leader? Is it an inspirational leader? Is it a confident leader? Is it a caring leader? Is it a leader that has high integrity? Is it, a, is it a leader that's knowledgeable? Okay, what's the four top most important attributes 
for you as a leader, okay, to own as your identity. Does this make sense? Okay, we got to start deciding who we are going to become and be more conscious in deciding what type of leader we're going to be. Okay, so that's what this particular exercise is about. Okay, I want you to say, what kind of leader do I really, okay, want to be in this world? Again, what's my intention as a leader? Okay, intention, now we got to understand, we got to implement that influence. So what's our intention as a leader? What's the identity I really want to internalize as a leader? What's my brand as a leader? Okay, so I want you to think about these things, okay? Uh, we'll take about a minute and I want you to write down these and then we're going to split up in the groups.